What's going on, everyone? Welcome back. Today, we've got our week seven fantasy football running back starts and sits for every single matchup. So make sure to tune in. If you enjoy, hit that like button, subscribe, give us a follow on Twitter at all day pigskin to continue interacting with us there. And let us hear it in the comment section. Do you agree, disagree, along with any other questions you guys might have? We will do our best to answer them all. But with that being said, Let's get right into it. Real quick, before getting into our breakdown, a quick word from our partners at Price Picks, which is our favorite DFS site of choice this NFL and fantasy football season. If you guys aren't familiar with them, do yourself a favor and check them out. In fact, when you sign up right now and use code ADP, you get a 100% deposit match up to $100. And look, we're already doing all this research for our fantasy football matchup. So why not take advantage of it and get some profits as well? Price picks, well, they allow you to basically do exactly that. They have so many different player prop bets, not only in terms of single stat DFS, but also in terms of fantasy score. And you combine can combine them any which way you want. Super simple, super easy to use. All you have to do, choose two more players from the board, and then just pick the over under on their projected fantasy score or on their single stat. Again, pretty much for every single matchup as the week progresses, those uh, options will be updated even more so. And then the great thing is you've got two different options in terms of how you want to bet it, whether it's a flex play. So that way you can miss one of your selections, but still win. Obviously that's the safer choice. Or if you want more bang for your buck, check out the power play where if you get all your picks correct, well, you win even bigger. So again, check all of that out details in the description. And we kick off week seven on Thursday night with the Broncos at the Browns. And honestly, I don't like the matchup for really any running back here. There might be an exception, but we'll get to that. Uh, for the Broncos, yes, probably a surprise, but I'm sending Javante Williams and Melvin Gordon. And I understand that, you know, even though I have these guys as sits, that a lot of you are going to be forced to start one, if not both of them, because there's bye weeks, there's injuries, a lot of injuries at the running back position. So, you know, you might have to, whether you want to or not, start these guys. But from a pure performance standpoint, the reason why I have both Williams and Gordon as sit, pretty simple, really. It's a running back by committee. These guys are getting pretty much for a while now, like 10, 11 carries each. It's a 50-50 split. And on those carries, they're getting, you know, 50, 60 yards type of deal. They're not getting peppered with targets either. They're facing a good Browns front. And they're two touchdown dependent. I do think the Broncos at one point will turn it over to Javante Williams. Uh, you know, maybe not 100%, but maybe it'll be like 65-35, 70-30 type of a split. But it just isn't here yet. So for that reason, um, I think the floor is just not high enough. You know, five to eight points on the week doesn't get me excited for the running back position. That's why I have the assists for the Browns. Uh, this is simple. Kareem Hunt injured. He's probably going to go on IR. Not an option. Nick Chubb, he's the guy that I was alluding to that potentially could be a starter here for the Browns, uh, but he missed week six. This is a short week. That's why this stinks for the Browns. It's a Thursday night game, but you know that's the luck there. Uh, so I wouldn't be shocked if Nick Chubb can't go if the Browns decide to be conservative with him. And if that's the case, you're down to Dernis Johnson, Demetric Felton, I would be sitting both of them here. The Broncos have a good stingy defense. Baker Mayfield, not 100%. Basically, the Browns offense, not 100%. So I would fade the running backs here. Obviously, if Nick Chubb does play, then he would be a great option, a top 10 running back type of guy uh, here because Kareem Hunt won't be present. I think Chubb could get crazy volume. So right now, we basically just have to keep an eye out for Nick Chubb. If he plays, you start him. If you don't, I'm fading all the running backs here. Then Chiefs at Titans. This is one of those few matchups in week seven where I really like both of the running backs. Daryl Williams for the Chiefs basically did what we all hoped Clyde Edwards Alaire would do since the start of the season. CH obviously an IR, but Daryl Williams more than capable. Uh, I think he can be a very sneaky, you know, borderline RB1 on the week. Uh, the Titans defense has been awful all season long, so I like the matchup here. Uh, and then for the Titans, Derrick Henry. I mean, the guy's been like a top three running back every single week in standard scoring formats. He's a locked and loaded top three guy. 
the Chiefs defense hasn't exactly been great. So you fire up Derrick Henry, pretty much the only, you know, good piece from this Titans offense so far. And then I do have Jarek McKinnon as a sit. Uh, I know he really didn't do all that much for the Chiefs this last week, but he was a guy that maybe some people were willing to take a chance on. I think we saw in week six that he's just not going to get enough volume. It's Daryl Williams, and that's that. So McKinnon is an obvious sit. Moving on to Washington at the Packers, another game where there's an injury at the running back position. This is going to be a trend, folks. Antonio Gibson uh, injures that shin, clearly not 100%. Uh, that's why McKissick had such a big role this last week, and honestly, why I think he could do the same here in week seven. Gibson is clearly dealing with something, and for that reason, McKissick could very well see a higher usage in terms of rushing volume, and because of this matchup with the Packers, which is a favorable one, I do want to mention that, which is why I would start Antonio Gibson if he is available. He does have the high touchdown upside, uh, but for McKissick, if the Packers pull away here from Washington, who have an inconsistent offense with Heineke under center, expect a lot of short and uh, kind of dink and dump passes to McKissick, which again uh, is why I would take a chance on both these running backs. The only thing kind of worth mentioning right now, as things stand with Gibson, not 100%, Washington, simply put, does not have a number one type of fantasy football running back option. Uh, for the Packers, Aaron Jones is an RB1 type of guy for fantasy football. I would say he's right on the border because, you know, even though he's been very, very efficient, uh, the carries, you know, like 13, 14 carries on the week, AJ Dillon, not too far behind. Jones kind of touchdown dependent, but he is still an integral part of this offense. So you start him. I think worst case, he's a high-end RB2. Dillon is more so that handcuff. Yes, he did go over 50 yards versus the Bears this last week. But, you know, without a touchdown, it's not really worth all that much. Basically a handcuff in case of emergency break glass type of deal if you're an Aaron Jones owner. Uh, but that's pretty much it. So you start Jones, you sit Dylan, as has been the case all season long. Moving on, Bengals at the Ravens. Joe Mixon, uh, pretty much the only guy you can trust here in this game. He had a great week six. I think he can continue versus the Ravens. I do believe this is a tougher matchup. So kind of temper those expectations. But either way, uh, he's playing at an RB1 level for the Ravens. You know, even when Latavius Murray was healthy, they weren't the best running back selection as far as fantasy football was concerned. Now, last week they had an awesome matchup. So we were good starting Latavius Murray. And he was actually playing really well, you know, projecting towards a really nice finish, then he gets banged up. So we still don't know whether he will play or not. I would say he's trending towards playing. Tyson Williams was a healthy scratch. That's worth noting. Uh, trending in the opposite direction as far as maybe faith that the coaches have in him. Uh, if Latavius Murray doesn't play, then I actually think Tyson Williams is going to play, be active for the Ravens, and probably going to get the majority of the carries. So I would take, you know, a chance on him. If not, uh, if Latavius Murray does play, I think he has the highest upside, uh, but don't get your expectations up too high versus the Bengals here. Uh, they've had a pretty good rush defense. Uh, Murray, maybe less than 100%, uh, but he does have the touchdown upside compared to these other guys. That's why I kind of listed him there. Again, it's a type of situation where just there's so many other injuries. There's so many bye weeks you might be forced to start Latavius Murray. And I will say this, if Murray doesn't play, if Tyson Williams doesn't play, don't start Freeman, don't start Le'Veon Bell. Uh, I think both these guys are kind of past their prime and kind of there for worst case scenarios. Yes, I know they had some success this last week, but that's not going to be an every week type of situation. And if Tyson Williams does play, if Murray is active, honestly, I would sit all of the Baltimore running backs because then there's just too many mouths to feed. Murray isn't 100%. The Bengals, kind of a tough matchup. Lamar Jackson is still there. So I would fade all these guys there. There were just a lot of scenarios to consider in this one. That's why I kind of had to put some names under the start column and go over the certain possibilities. Afterwards, Panthers at the Giants. Christian McCaffrey, obviously the big news of this last week, he got put on IR, going to miss at least three weeks. So that hamstring was more serious than initially thought. Surprise. So Hubbard, well, you continue to start him. 
obviously doesn't have nearly the same upside as Christian McCaffrey. You'd like to hear what Matt Rule says in terms of that the Panthers are going to focus on reestablishing the rushing attack, and then Hubbard is their guy. So I think he can be a decent, you know, low to mid-level RB2 on the week. For the Giants, Saquon Barkley, if he does play, because another big question mark, obviously this last week he didn't because of that lower ankle injury. Now, you know, has enough time passed? We don't know. We were kind of speculating with him to begin with. Yes, the Panthers' run defense was kind of stingy to begin the year, uh, but that was versus some very bad opponents. That's why here I wouldn't be scared to start Saquon Barkley. If he doesn't play, same situation. I wouldn't be scared to start Devontae Booker because I think we saw uh, what we mentioned last week in PPR formats. I think he has a decent enough floor. I think he's going to get like four to six targets uh, on the game. You know, the pass catcher for the Giants a bit banged up right now, and Booker is going to benefit from that. He's going to benefit from getting large volume as well. So I think he's kind of in that lower tier than Hubbard a little bit, low end RB2 uh, more so, I would say. Then Falcons at the Dolphins. I don't like this matchup. It's mainly Cordero Patterson that I'm going to be starting, and that's primarily because of what he can do as a pass catcher. Uh, yes, you know, uh, Mike Davis is still involved and Patterson is as well, but you know, rushing game alone isn't why Patterson is valuable. It's because what he's doing as a pass catcher, and he has that running back and wide receiver eligibility. So that's really nice. Um, I think he's going to be a mid-level RB2 on the week, especially if Russell Gage returns. You know, Kyle Pitts kind of trending in the right direction. Calvin Ridley going to be returning. So I would say, you know, maybe the days of Patterson being that kind of stud that we saw these last couple of weeks might be numbered. So I do want to throw that out there for you guys. But uh, this matchup could be a good one regardless. I think he's in the RB2 conversation. But then the other guys, I'm not really all that excited for. Mike Davis, two touchdown dependent. Uh, I can't get too excited for like 11 carries for 50 yards. Uh, and then for the Dolphins, Miles Gaskin, of course, after having a monster game versus the Patriots, has an absolute dud versus the Jaguars. Uh, we're seeing that he's too dependent as a pass catcher. And they're too inconsistent, the Dolphins are, in terms of getting him involved that way. So even though this is a good matchup, I just don't have faith in Miles Gaskin right now. So I would be fading him here. Then Jets at the Patriots. Again, only really one name you want to consider. Damian Harris had a nice game versus the Cowboys. And versus the Jets, you better believe you start him here. Uh, you feel pretty confident about you know the Patriots' chances to dominate the Jets. That's why I don't like the running back situation for the Jets here. Uh, last time these two teams played, the Patriots uh, had a pretty successful outing, uh, and you know they kind of shut down the Jets' offense. So Michael Carter, really whoever is the primary Jets running back, I list Carter here, but you know if you want to argue it's Ty Johnson, whatever. A bad matchup. I think it's going to be a bad situational type of usage. So I'm fading him here. And Ramondre Stevenson, kind of the number two guy behind Damian Harris. Yes, he had some success this last week because he got in the end zone. But if you take that away, the stats weren't all that impressive. Uh, I wouldn't go try and find, you know, lightning in a bottle two weeks in a row here. I think that was more so just a one week type of stint than a long term you know, uh, prognosis in terms of what we can expect. So I'm sitting Stevenson here. Then Eagles at the Raiders, only really one running back that I go with. Josh Jacobs, more so a standard suited guy. I think he's in the low end RB2 conversation. Kenyon Drake in PPR formats, he's again, unfortunately not getting enough volume. Yes, I realize he's coming off a great game here, but if you just look past the touchdowns, which other than this last week, haven't really been there. The stats aren't all that impressive. That's what worries me here. Just too many inconsistencies. Uh, I wouldn't consider Drake in standard scoring formats. If you want to consider him as a low-end RB2, high-end RB3 in PPR, then I guess that'd be okay. Uh, for the Eagles, sitting all their running backs. It's as simple as this. They are not giving these guys opportunities. The talent might be there. But the opportunities are not. Jalen Hurts is taking away from those opportunities. The Eagles come out too slow offensively, so they have to abandon the run. So pass on the Eagles running backs. Then Lions at the Rams. 
Uh, this is one where I'll start DeAndre Swift, even though I am afraid about the game script here for the Lions. I think the Rams can absolutely just blitz the Lions and just demolish them. I, I wouldn't be shocked if this is like 40 to, to 10 type of deal here. Uh, where the Lions have to abandon the run completely. That's why I have Jamal Williams as a sit and just pass the football. But, you know, Goff has struggled so much uh, doing so that I really don't have faith in Williams. I think Swift is going to be the main guy. You know, you might be hoping for some garbage time there. Uh, much more of a PPR suited running back here in DeAndre Swift. I think he's because of the matchup here in the RB2 category. But on the flip side for the Rams, I love this matchup. I think Henderson can be an RB1 on the week. Hell, he's been the most consistent fantasy football running back this season. There's no other running back in fantasy football for the games that they have played that have scored 15 or more fantasy football points every single week. Daryl Henderson, the only guy to do so. And you better believe it's going to continue versus the Lions. And I actually have Sony Michelle as a start here. I think this is going to be the biggest blowout of the week. And I think Sony Michelle gets some playing time here. So, you know, more of a standard suited guy, but I think he has sneaky upside for like a mid-level RB2 finish on the week. Then Bears at the Bucks. Only one name. Again, Leonard Fournette. He had a huge, huge week in week six. He is the guy for the Bucks at the running back position. Yes, the Bears are a bit stingy, but offensively, they just can't get it done. I think the Bucks are going to absolutely blitz the Bears. You know, maybe they take their foot off the gas pedal a little bit. The Bears do have a good defense that, in fact, we saw beat Tom Brady and the Bucks last year. Uh, but I think Fournette is still a good play. I think he can be a low to mid-level RB2 on the week. I don't trust anyone else here, though. Uh, Damian Williams didn't play due to COVID this last week. Khalil Herbert was great in that performance, but that was versus the Packers. And now, if Williams comes back, this could potentially become a running back by committee. And they're playing one of the best rush defenses in the NFL. Translation, this is not a good matchup for the Bears and those running backs, especially if the Bucks go up and the way Tom Brady has played this year, that wouldn't shock me at all. And then the Bears have to abandon the run, and it is a disaster for the Bucks. Ronald Jones, Giovanni Bernard, yes, they're kind of big names, but they haven't done a damn thing behind Leonard Fournette, so you sit them both. Next up, we've got the Texans at the Cardinals, and here I'm primarily looking at the Arizona backfield. Edmonds and Connor, I would start both of them. I think the Cardinals can dominate the Texans here, put up a lot of points on them. That's why I think Connor and uh, Chase Edmonds can be low-end RB2s on the week. Connor getting the usage as the primary rusher. Edmonds also getting some in that department, but uh, as a pass catcher as well. So he's kind of that PPR guy. Connor can be the standard guy. And I just like both of them due to the scoring upside in this game that the Cardinals have. The Texans stink. And I'm fading them here. Mark Ingram is a guy that I'm going to sit. Really, I'm not even going to waste my time mentioning Lindsey or David Johnson. They're not getting the usage. The Texans, I think, are going to struggle here versus this high-scoring Cardinals offense. I think the Cardinals defense can shut down the Texans as well. Sure, Mark Ingram is getting, you know, some volume. And, you know, that can translate to some success. But I think that the game script is going to be so bad here for the Texans that I would fade Mark Ingram. Then Colts at the 49ers. I'll start Jonathan Taylor. Yes, Taylor owners are kind of pulling at their hair because he's not getting enough opportunities, even though uh, when he does, he's absolutely electric like we've seen these last two weeks. But the good news is he's doing what he has to on those limited opportunities, and it is great. So you start him here again. I think he is a high-end RB2 on the week. The 49ers, I do like that defense. Here, I'll start Elijah Mitchell. Something to keep in mind. When Jimmy Garoppolo comes back, I think Mitchell's you know value is higher. Uh, we saw when Mitchell was healthy before the buy that Sermon really didn't do jack. Uh, so he is a sit for me. Uh, for Mitchell, if it is Trey Lance under center, his upside is limited. He is in low-end RB2 then, but I would still start him. I think he's going to get enough volume to be fantasy relevant. And then Naheem Hines. Uh, he's just kind of been absent these last couple of weeks, not getting enough usage, not getting enough looks in the passing attack with T.Y. Hilton gone even more so. So no thank you to Naheem Hines. 
And finally, Saints at the Seahawks. You start Alvin Kamara. That's the easy part here. The Saints coming off the bye week. The Seahawks without Russell Wilson. Uh, that just team has a complete, you know, potential breakdown and trickle down effect everywhere, not only offensively, defensively, it affects everyone. So Kamara, I think is a good start for the Seahawks. Alex Collins, if he plays, he got banged up. He was another kind of waiver wire addition. Obviously, Chris Carson getting put on IR. So Collins becoming relevant, but he gets banged up versus the Steelers. There's no official word whether he plays or not. But, you know, out of all these guys with an asterisk next to his name, I'm kind of the most worried about him. Also, Rashad Penny is coming off IR, um, and he could potentially see some action here. Now, I wouldn't get too cute. I wouldn't start Penny in his first game back from IR. Uh, without Russell Wilson, I'd be a little bit hesitant, especially if the Seahawks want to be conservative with him. You know, there's DJ Dallas, there's uh, Homer as well. And if Collins plays, then forget about it. Um, but right now, if Collins plays, he's the guy that I would trust the most. If he doesn't, then I'm fading all Seattle running backs. But with that, we wrap up our week seven fantasy football running back starts and sits for every single matchup. As always, let us hear in the comment section. Did you agree, disagree along with any other questions? We will do our best to answer them all. If you enjoyed, hit that like button, subscribe, give us a follow on Twitter at all day pigskin to continue interacting with us there. And in the meantime, we'll see you guys in future videos.